everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let us take a moment. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. No matter where you are, in your living room, in your kitchen, your bedroom, get to that secret place, that secret closet. Let's lay it before the Lord on this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come before you as humble as we know how. Lord God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Lord God, thank you just for being God. Hallelujah, Lord God, we praise and worship you, Lord God. For you are magnificent, for you are amazing. Lord God, we trust in you. Lord God, we bless you. Lord God, we just, we just thank you, Lord God, for everything, Lord God, that you've done, everything that you're doing, everything that you're going to do in the future, Lord God. Lord God, we need you now more than ever before, Lord God. Lord God, I ask you to be with each and every one represented in this house, Lord God. Be with each and every one that is watching this live on this morning, Lord God. Lord God, we rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus right now. Satan, Lord God, his, his kingdom is, is crushed down. Devil, you are destroyed in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord God, we just ask you to just be with us. Continue to walk with us, Lord God. Lord God, block any attack from the enemy, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We just ask for your protection, Lord God. Not only for us, but for our loved ones, our children, Lord God. Lord God, keep our children, Lord God, on this morning, Lord God. For you know exactly where they are, Lord God. And if we can't be there, Lord God, we know that you can, Lord God. Lord God, come into this place, Lord God. Come into this house, Lord God. Give us a word, Lord God, that will purify our hearts, Lord God, that will draw us closer and closer unto you, Lord God. Lord God, we love you. We thank you, Lord God. And we just bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
the fact that God is still worthy of all praise and honor. So right where you are, I dare you to slip your hands up and begin to praise him. Begin to worship him and begin to exalt him simply because you know that he's good. Simply because you know that he's God. Simply because you know that he's great right there in your room, right there in the living room, right there in the bedroom, right there in the kitchen, right there wherever you are. I dare you to slip your hands up and begin to worship the God that we serve simply because you know our God is great. Our God is awesome. Our God is wonderful. Our God is magnificent and there is none like him. So just for a few more seconds, I need you to lift your voices and sing with me because all I want
I want to give you the honor. I want to magnify your name. You are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. You are everlasting Father. You're worthy, Lord. We magnify you. I dare you right there to begin to worship our God because you know that he's worthy of praise. You know that he's worthy of the honor. You know that he's worthy of the glory. God, we praise you. God, we magnify you. God, we exalt you. We lift our hands and allow our praise and our worship to be acceptable in your sight, God. So whatever it is that may cause us to become the distracted, God, we lay aside the weight and the sin that may so easily beset us so that you make this glory out of our lives. Have your way, oh God. I will not allow my circumstances to determine my worship because I understand that you're God now and you will be God then. You have never changed. You will always be the same and I will give you what you're deserving which is my worship. Every hallelujah belongs to you. Every thank you Jesus belongs to you. Every praise belongs to you. All of my worship belongs to you. Why? Because the Father seeketh such to worship him and then that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What are you saying, Pastor Tim? It may not always feel good, but I worship him because I was created to. I may not always understand it, but I will worship him because I was created to. I may not always see it, but I will worship him because I was created to. So let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. I dare you right now, if you're questioning, should you be worshiping? I dare you to breathe in and breathe out and you let the praise sound off. Breathe in and breathe out and let your worship sound off until heaven responds. We give you glory, God. We give you glory. We give you praise. We magnify you, God. You're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised from everlasting to everlasting. If the angels can cry out, then surely can I. Yeah, yeah, surely should I. Yeah, if the elders fall before you and cast their crowns at your feet and worship you, then surely should I. If the trees obey and they worship you, then Surely should I, if the wind obey and it worships you, then surely should I, if the animals can obey and they can worship you, then surely should I, why, because you've been better than good to me, you've been better than great to me, I will give you glory, because you created me with these lungs, I will open up my mouth and I will release the wind of God to give him glory, I dare somebody to open up your mouth and release a worship in this place right where you are. Release 
is a worship. I give him glory. We come against every attack of the enemy with my worship. I come against every plot of the devil with my worship. I come against every scheme of the devil with my worship. I dare you to give him glory. I dare you to give him praise. He's confused right now. Him because it's working for me. 
Is there anybody out there that knows that it's working for you? Right there in the message, I need you to put it's working for me. Yeah, I need you to tell somebody right there in your house, it's working for me. Yeah, I don't know how God's going to do it. It's not my job to figure it out. It's working for me. It's not my job to make sure that the plans work how God has orchestrated them to work. It's just working for me. It doesn't have to make sense. But you know what we say? It makes miracles. It's working for me. It's working for me. It's working. It's working for me. Yeah. It's working for you. It's working for you. It's hard right now, but it's working for you. It's complicated right now, but it's working for you. You don't understand it right now, but it's working for you. So right there, just give God praise. Thank you for tuning in live. We, we, we're grateful to have you this morning in our virtual worship experience. Grab your Bibles, grab your smartphones, grab your tablets. Go to Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God will perfect that. That's concerning me. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in my favor. Is there anybody out there that knows that it's going to turn in your favor? It's working out for you. Yeah, Ezekiel 37, 1. I've been reading at the first verse. The hand of the Lord was on me. And he brought me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley. <clears throat> it was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were a great many of them on the surface of the valley. And they were very dry. Then he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I replied, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, prophesy concerning these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of God the Lord yeah he said to me prophesy concerning speak concerning these bones and say to them dry bones hear the word of the Lord God we decrease that you may increase we step down that you may step up help us to articulate your word with clarity power and authority it is in that matchless name we do all things. Jesus the Christ, and it is so. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I replied, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, prophesy or speak concerning these bones. And say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This morning, my sisters and brothers out there in here, I want to speak from the topic, simply live. Live. That's it. Live. Live, a word oftentimes spoken, but yet still the less demonstrated in our lives. We want it spoken by others, but refuse to speak it over ourselves. Can I suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that this is the season for you to stop waiting for someone else to do what God has already equipped you for. I refuse to sit here and die waiting on someone else to speak into my life. I'm declaring and decreeing over my own life. Live. 
Why? Because oftentimes we are subject to become distracted when life happens around us. Oftentimes we're subject to become dismayed when life happens around us. Oftentimes when the enemy starts cutting up, we lose focus on the very things that God has spoken in and over our lives. But you got to understand that you cannot continue living your life uh, in a place that you're expecting others uh, to pull you out of uh, when God has given you the power uh, to speak over your own self. Uh, the devil does not care uh, about what you think, uh, but he's terrified of what can come out of your mouth. The devil does not care about what you think in your mind, but he's terrified of what you can speak. Well, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? Well, Proverbs 18 and 21 puts it best this way. The tongue has the power of life and death. The stakes are high. Your words can either speak life or your words can speak death. Our tongues can build others up or they can tear them down. And an unchecked fire uh, doubles in size every minute. Uh, what are you saying? An unchecked tongue uh, doubles in sizes uh, in the damage that it can cause. Uh, but the devil understands uh, that the moment you wake up, uh, yeah, the devil is terrified uh, of the moment you will wake up and realize uh, that you're greater uh, than where you are. Uh, but you got to know uh, that I refuse to allow uh, my present circumstances uh, to determine whether or not uh, I'm going to live uh, and be what God has called me to be. Uh, I came to tell somebody this morning, uh, live. Uh, I know that it's upsetting sometimes, uh, but you got to live. Uh, I know it's disheartening at times, uh, but you got to live. Uh, but uh, not until you begin to speak it will God begin to perform it. Not, a, not until you open up your mouth and begin to speak over your own lies will God begin to perform it. What are you saying, Pastor Tim? God, God does not move off of what's in your mind. He moves off of what comes out of our mouths. Yeah, God is not obligated to what you are thinking. Yeah, but he's obligated to his word coming out of your mouth. Could it be the reason why things are not changing in your life? Because you have more worry than you have faith. Yeah, yeah, you have more complaints than you have the word of God. But you have to learn to speak the word of God over your life. I don't don't care how it looks uh, you got to speak to that situation uh, and declare these words uh, this is the word of the Lord uh, you will live uh, and you shall not surely die why because I have a word uh, that's hinging on my lips uh, and if I speak the word of God uh, he's obligated uh, to perform what I say uh, because he has to honor his word uh, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley. And Ezekiel begins to say it. He says, and it was full of bones. So we have a problem here. He says, God's spirit is on me. God's hand is on me. Yeah, God's presence is on my life. But what we feel like is when we have God, huh, we don't supposed to face adversity. Huh? I don't know what you're saying, God. Huh? We feel that because we have the spirit of God, huh? we don't supposed to face huh, hard times. Huh? We feel because we know God, huh? we shouldn't go through this. Huh? But what Ezekiel says here in chapter huh, 37, huh, he says, the hand of God huh, was on me. Yeah, huh? He says, I was anointed to do this thing. Huh? He says, but the conflict that we have huh, is that he set me in huh, the middle of of, uh, a valley. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? Uh, he's not at the beginning. Uh, he's not at the end, uh, but he is in the middle. Uh, what happens uh, when the hand of God is on your life, uh, but he leaves you uh, in the middle of the mess uh, that is surrounding you? Uh, you got to understand to live. You say the hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me out by his spirit and he set me down in the middle of the valley and not only am I in a valley but then he says it's full of bones. 
he led me all around them. There were very great many of them on the surface of the valley, and they were very dry. Then he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I replied, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, well, prophesy. He says, begin to speak to the bones. He says, begin to speak life because I know, and because I know, I know that it has to respond to the word that I've given you. He says to me, prophesy or speak concerning these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Well, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? Even in the middle of your valley, you got to learn to speak the word of God. Even in the middle of adversity, you got to learn to speak the word of God. Even in the midst of conflict, you got to learn to speak the word of God. Why? Because if I have the word of God, it doesn't matter how things look. I understand what he said. And if God said it, then I'm believing it. If God has spoken it, then I'm standing on it. See, the problem is that we're looking for it to happen before we begin speaking. We're looking for it to happen before we begin speaking. But can I challenge you to speak it until you hear it? Yeah, yeah. I challenge you to speak it until you hear it. Well, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? The Bible says that while Ezekiel prophesied as he had been commanded, while prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. But isn't it funny how? that things did not come together uh, until he began to speak it. Uh, isn't it funny uh, that your life is out of order uh, and then shambles uh, until you begin speaking? Uh, isn't it funny uh, that situations don't begin to change uh, until you begin speaking it? Uh, don't speak out of emotions, uh, but speak out of the word of God uh, because God is not obligated uh, to respond to your emotions, uh, but he is subject uh, to respond to his word. Uh, and if I speak his word, it holds him accountable for it. But we, we, we want things to, to look like they're coming together before we begin to speak those things. Yeah, we want our life just to fall in place just because on GP purposes. Yeah, on GP, yeah, general purposes. Yeah, we, we want things just to fall in place, but it doesn't work like that because God does not intrude into our lives without being invited. And the only way that you can invite God is you got to give him his word. See, things Things are not changing in your life simply because you're more worried about how they're going to look at you versus saying what he told you. What are you saying? It don't make sense that I'm standing in the middle of the situation that I am in and you're telling me to speak to something that is dead. It doesn't make sense that I'm in the middle of the things that I'm dealing with and you're telling me to speak to something that you know don't even have the ability to hold life. Well, God is saying this morning, it does not have to look like what it seems like unless you speak it until it becomes what I say. Well, well, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? It does not always have to add up as long as you're standing on the command of God. He says, I commanded Ezekiel to speak to the dry bones. And Ezekiel says, well, God, you know that you you are the only one huh, that can cause them to live. Huh? I've heard of you causing the dead man to rise, huh? but I've never seen you demonstrate such a power as this. I don't know. He says, listen, Ezekiel, it may not make sense, but you got to believe my word. It may not add up, but all the proof I need is in his word. If his word can create a world, then surely it can bring everything that has died around me and in me back to life. Yeah, live. I understand that it seems like this thing can't be resuscitated, but we serve the God of creating opportunity 
in the least opportune times. We serve the type of God that will create opportunity in the least opportune times. Yeah, God will cause you to come forth and live even in the lowest places of your life. Is it possible for the bones to come alive in the middle of the valley? But the Bible says that God instructs Ezekiel. He says, Ezekiel, I've spoken a word over your lives. And because I've spoken a word over your lives, he says, I'm obligated to honor my word. I just need some obedience. Listen, somebody needs to hear this. God doesn't need you to try to figure it out. He just needs your obedience. God doesn't need you to try to work it out. He just needs your obedience. God doesn't need for you to understand it. He just needs your obedience. Ezekiel is in the middle of a valley full of bones. Bones, yeah, 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 is the last thing to decompose on the body. Yeah, yeah, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? Not only are they fleshless, but they're also dry. Yeah, yeah, they're dry. What, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? Well, there's an indication in the text because you need to realize what you're really dealing with. There's an indication in your life because you need to realize what you're really dealing with. You need to realize what you're really going through. The Bible says now that not only is Ezekiel in the middle of a valley, but the valley is also full of dry bones. And, and they made indication and they made sure that they let you know that it's not only dry, but listen, very dry. So the bones are very dry. Do you not understand that that mean that they had been there for a long time and almost at the stage of final decomposition? Huh? Yeah, then, then God asks, huh, can these bones live? Huh? A rhetorical question huh, because he knows the answer already. Huh? Ezekiel says, bruh, huh, I, I, I know huh, that you're not asking me this. Huh? You already know the answer huh? because surely you're God. He says, I, I know uh, your capability, uh, and I know what you can do. Uh, but, bro, you asking me a question uh, that only you know. Uh, I, I've, I've never seen it done before uh, because circumstances, uh, it says that it does not make sense uh, for something such as this uh, to be able to live. Uh, what you got to understand, uh, God wasn't asking Ezekiel uh, a question uh, to see if Zeke, Ezekiel would respond uh, the right way. Uh, he was asking him a question question uh, because he wanted Ezekiel to understand uh, that the proof is uh, I'm still God. Uh, he says the proof is uh, I still can do what I say I can do. Uh, but Ezekiel says God you know uh, the bones are not just skinless uh, but they're also dry. Uh, he says we come to the final stage uh, because they've been here for a long time. Uh, he says so they're reaching their final uh, decomposition. Uh, they're getting ready to break down uh, and become dust again uh, or become yeah, yeah, huh? yeah, earth again. Huh? He says, but how in the world huh? would you ask me a question like that? Huh? And God says, listen, because I'm God. Huh? He says, and I need you to understand, Ezekiel, huh? it's not rhetorical. Huh? It's just the proof. Huh? It's the proof to show you huh? that in spite of how situations look, huh? I'm God enough huh? to change the outcome. Huh? At the moment you speak a word, huh? he says, I'm God enough huh? to change the dynamics. Huh? The moment you speak a word, huh? but the reason reason why it's not changing huh, is because you're talking about the wrong thing. Huh? Don't talk about who's misusing you. Huh? Don't talk about who's mistreating you. Huh? But speak my word huh, and say no weapon that's formed against me huh, shall prosper. Huh? And every tongue that rises against me, huh, it shall be condemned. Huh? Because your word says it, God. Huh? Your word says when the enemy comes in huh, like a flood, huh, your spirit will lift up a standard against him. Huh? Your word says I'm the head huh, and not the tail. Huh? I am the lender huh? and not the borrower. Huh? I am above huh? and not beneath. Huh? And if I have the word, huh? I have the power huh? to say live. Live. 
lay a while because you thought you was living. Yeah, you were thinking that you was living, but in all actuality, you really wasn't. Yeah, you were too busy worrying about circumstances. You were too busy worrying about how to make others happy. You were too busy worrying about how to please others. But what the Bible says now, he reminds him, he says, Ezekiel, I'm not just God. He says, but I'm all powerful. He says, I need you to understand that this is not the rhetorical question. He says, but it's rather as is written that no eye have seen and neither has ear heard and neither has it entered into the hearts or has men even imagined the things that I have prepared for those who love me. What are you saying, Pastor Tim? God does not need for it to add up, for it to work out. He just needs your belief. He just need your faith. He doesn't need for it to add up in order for it to work out. He just needs you to open your mouth and begin to speak his word. You have to learn to speak it how. He said it until it manifests into what he said it would be. He said live. He didn't tell Ezekiel to tell the bones how to come back together because they had sense enough to understand the obedience uh, that God had given them uh, from the moment he created them uh, and they understood uh, that the knee bone connects uh, oh yeah to the thigh bone uh, they understood uh, that the tendon had to come together uh, and the sartorius uh, and the the longest uh, had to tie them together uh, and produce the iliac uh, because if the iliac uh, has to respond to the word of the Lord uh, then also the auctor uh, then the a order uh, has to respond also. Uh, he says, but I'm going to speak uh, to the outer condition uh, until the heart understands uh, that I am God uh, and nothing can change it. Uh, nothing can stop it. Uh, he says, I am the God uh, that if I command you to speak it, uh, you got to speak it uh, until it changes. Uh, well, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? Uh, Ezekiel began uh, to speak as God said. And the Bible says that when the breath of life is breathing the body, it comes alive. The four winds in the king, the full power of the eternal breath. Since the winds come from the direction that God says it comes from, you got to know that God, he tells Ezekiel, he says, speak the word and prophesy to the winds of the earth because I'm commanded the winds to obey your voice. Well, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? The Bible says that in Genesis, that man stood there, an empty chair. Without life inside But God spoke breath And what are you saying He breathed ruach Inside of the lungs And men became A living being Well God says it like this When I spoke into man Man did not just breathe But he had a voice And the voice says That he can declare things The being not as though they are the moment he opened his mouth uh, and begins to speak, uh, well, what is the first test? Uh, he says, Adam. Uh, he says, what is this? Uh, and Adam begins uh, to name the animals. Uh, it wasn't because God uh, did not know what they were, uh, but he needed to see uh, if Adam had his voice. Uh, because if you got my voice, uh, then you can subdue the earth uh, and take the men over it uh, and speak life. Uh, to the very thing did and bring them out of a valley and say live so he tells Ezekiel he says Ezekiel I don't need you to worry about how they're going to come together I just need you to speak to them I just need you to speak to it why? Ezekiel did not know nothing about anatomy. But God did. God didn't tell him to try to figure out how the brachiocephalic 
supposed to connect yeah to the common carotid he didn't know nothing about the left common carotid or the left subclavian he didn't know about the right subclavian connecting the axillary from the axillary yeah yeah to the brachial to the radio to the owner to the digits he didn't know about that but God never concerned him with that task to try to figure it out but what are you saying Pastor Tim there's a lot of things in your life that you're worried about that God did not design you to figure out no that's not your responsibility oftentimes I say we cannot allow God to be God because we're too busy trying to be him See, that's the reason why you're stressed out. That's the reason why you're burnt out. Because you're trying to fulfill a role that he did not design or created you for. Ezekiel's only responsibility is to speak, or we say in the text, prophesy to the bone. Ezekiel said, listen, God, they're dry. Very dry. But, you want me to speak? I'll speak. Wind and breath and spirit are all identical in Hebrew and Greek. God says, speak to the wind. In other words, he says, speak to the breath, the ruach of God, so that the earth knows that my voice is here. Listen. Whether you believe it or not, the earth has to respond to the voice of God. Do you think God would have told you that he created you in his image for you not to understand the power that he gave you along with that? So what he's showing Ezekiel is, you're created in my image. I don't have to shower you with oil for you to speak in this valley. All I need you to do is wake up and realize who I've already called you to be. Talk to those bones. Tell them to live. How in the world, Ezekiel was thinking, can the skeleton I have become come alive again? God, only you know. What are you saying? There's things that you've written off in your life because to men they seem as if they could not be resuscitated yeah there's dreams there's visions there's plans there's order there's things that God has orchestrated and destined for you that you have allowed a valley to suppress your promise but you cannot afford to allow that to happen you got to speak even in the middle of your valley. You got to speak live. God wants you to receive, but not just receive, but he wants you to revive some things that have died in your life. I don't know who I'm talking to, but until you speak it, it's not changing. Speak his word and live. We're not in the business of trying to make sense out of it. That's not your job. We're in the business of making faith out of it. Yeah, because we walk by faith and not by sight. Some things aren't going to happen until you believe that they're going to happen. Until you speak that they're going to happen. Speak it and live. Live beyond the hurt. Live beyond the pain. Live beyond the disappointment. Live beyond the review. Live beyond them talking. If you don't do anything else, please just live. Why? Because remember, that your next is as equally important 
as your now. Your next is as equally important as your now. Don't wait until you see the results before you start speaking the truth. Speak it even when you don't see it. And live. Live. Can these dry bones live? Can you live beyond the hurt? Can you live beyond whoever walked out of your lives? Can you live beyond those that did not believe in the vision that God gave you? But be okay, my brothers and sisters, when support doesn't come in the form that you expect it to. Because why? Can I be honest with you? It's not someone else's responsibility to carry what God has given you to birth. It's your vision. It's your dream. It's your destiny. It's your purpose. It's your life. Live. Speak to everything that you bury. Call it back forth. I don't care how dry it is. I don't care how ugly it looks. One thing about God, he will call the bones to come back together. He will call the tendons to connect back to the bones. He will call the veins, the arteries, to begin to flow smoothly again. He will put flesh on them. And he will breathe breath into that once again. Live. Live. If there's somebody out there that doesn't know Jesus and the pardon of their sins, he said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You got to understand, if you're not living, it's simply because you don't have him. Because you know that when you have him, it doesn't matter how it looks. It's going to work for me. It's going to work for you. But speak to it and command it to live. Don't wait for somebody else to tell you. You speak to it. You speak on it. Command it to live. Give it the word of God. Speak the word of God. Why? Because his word will not return to him void. It will not return to him empty. But it shall accomplish everything that he sent it out to do. Speak his word. And he has to respond. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sin, slip your hands right where you are up. So Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me for all of my sins. I admit that I'm a sinner. I need you. I believe that you sent your son in this earth and that he died after taking on the sins of the world so that I might have life. He went into the grave, he went into hell, and he preached to those that were captive. And on the third day, he got up with all power in his hand. And now he sits on the waiting for the return to gather his church. Pray that prayer and accept them into your life. And I'm believing with you that if you've accepted them into your life, he will fill you with his Holy Spirit.
and we're here to serve the people in the city. This is Pastor Tim. I love you. I'm praying for every family that's in bereavement this morning. That God comforts you and strengthen you right where you are. I'm speaking to everyone that's sick. And I'm praying that God heals you. Because he's the God that heals. He's not the doctor, but he's God. All power belongs to him. I'm praying that he keeps us throughout this week and that this week we declare the great and successful week. As this day has been declared a great and successful day. That wherever you go, that the blood covers you. And that God keeps you from seen and unseen danger. I speak now over your life that you shall live and not die. You will not give up on dreams. You will not give up on the vision. You will not give up on the hope and promise that God has made you. But you will believe it. You will hold on to it until he fulfills it. children's lives so you shall live to declare the works of the Lord I love you I pray that you have a great and successful week God bless you thank you for tuning in again and as I say one more time live this is Pastor Tim we are the Source Church